All right. So for our next exercise, we are actually going to learn how to handwrite stuff on. So in this example, I've got the word Webster coming on. I've chosen a font that has a little bit imperfection, kind of looks like it could have been painted or drawn so that it kind of goes with the effect. And it's just slowly writing itself on. Now, this is a very imperfect effect. If you look, the letter E is not coming on uh, in the way that it would be drawn. So I actually did kind of a hack job on this original example. And what I'm gonna show you is hopefully gonna turn out even better than that. But I wanted you to get a sense of what we're doing. So let's learn how to handwrite or paint on with a new exercise. So let's do composition menu, new composition. And we're gonna call this uh, paint on, works for me. Put a two after it so that I know this was the second one I did. All right, and yes, as you can imagine, we need to start with the word we're going to write on. I'm gonna use Webster because it's not got too many letters. If you wanna do a five, six letter thing, your first name, I don't care. It doesn't matter that much. Uh, what matters is let's make it look cool and have it be big enough that we actually can see what we're doing. So, um, but it's not gonna be as cool with, you know, this hard edged font. It's not gonna look look like I want it to. So I'm going to find a different font. This is always what takes me so long. Oh, that's kind of cool. Um, can I bold it? No. Uh, of course, it's a font I don't have that much control over. What about that? Yeah, that looks a little amateur. Maybe better than that. That's a little too fancy. Good old papyrus. Oh, that's what I should do. I should do avatar as my right on. How about this? That too sucks. You know, part of why it may suck is because I'm doing all caps. Yeah, that's a little curvy, but I don't know. I'll be fine. So hopefully you found something that you like. I'm going to change my color because we've been staring at green too long. Make it something else. How about purple? Purple sounds good. All right. And this has got a weird texture to it. Maybe that's not it. That makes it a bad choice. Maybe. Uh Everybody got theirs already, and I'm the one holding up the process here. It's too hard. <laughs> I don't have all day. It's a classroom exercise. Oh, I should have left it the way it was. No, that's the hard one again. It doesn't help me. If all else fails, undo until you get back to the one you wanted. All right, fine. We'll do it even though it has a weird texture on it. I don't know that it matters. I just was, don't want to, anyone to be confused by what they're seeing. Okay, so uh, here's what we do. We're going to mask this thing away, okay? So what we need to do is we need to go to our pen tool and as soon as we start masking it, and going to know what we want to do. It's going to basically create a mask for this layer. And what we want to do is we want to draw the pattern of how it's going to write on. If you want to do cool curved Boolean curves and all that, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just probably not going to spend too much time getting it perfect because we're doing it in class. Now, the key to doing this and not having it blow up in your face is to make sure that you do not start a second one when you switch letters. I did this to myself before and it really messed stuff up. So what I mean by that is I'm going to deliberately go and when I get to the end of this letter and you wanna draw through the middle of the text, then I need to actually connect the letters, okay? There will be nothing there, so it's not going to matter but it will matter if you end up having more than one mask. It'll really screw stuff up. So make sure that you do not start a new mask. If you do, then you need to 
undo until you're back to one again. And I just clicked one that it didn't like, so I undid it and went back. I can see the line connecting, so I know I'm okay. But your goal is to draw pretty much down the middle of these letters, and then it's perfectly fine to cross over stuff you've already done. Go on to the next letter. Now you, we will be able to add some key, some uh, plot points or whatever these are later. So if you missed an area, uh, you can come back later and add more, but don't do it now. It will confuse things. All right, so just keep drawing until you get through the entire word without the line ever being broken. It can shoot across the letter. It can shoot across empty space. That's all fine. It just can't get broken. The line has to be continuous for this to work. Oh, and here I just finished the R and Webster, but I haven't crossed the T. So when the pen is done over there, it's going to come over here and it's going to draw across this because that won't have been there yet. And that'll be the last thing it writes on is the T cross, which will make it feel more like a real animation, which is kind of cool. Now, double check yourself. If you think you've done it and hit M on your track and make sure that you have only one mask. If you have two, then you need to undo until the second mask goes away and then pick up wherever it left off and finish it. But again, I really messed myself up having two masks the last time I did this. So it's very important that there will be only one. Um, you should have a color with the lines you were drawing. Mine is an orange color. Um, you can sort of see it later. And let me, this is an area I meant to put a, an, a dot and I didn't put it there. So I'm going to try to click it. And yes, it did let me after the fact put an extra point in. But what I was watching for in the corner was if it started a new mask, if it got that confused, but it didn't. I actually just clicked on the line like this T is a little far over. I click on the line and then I can move and it makes a dot and then I can move it over and there's no other masks here. I'm going to double check by hitting M again and M again. So I closed mask, opened it again. I think a second one would pop up if I made that mistake. You'd see it right away. But I really can't emphasize enough that for this to work has to be one path. And it, unlike when we were drawing mask shapes, this path never closes. My T ended right here at the end of the letter when I cross it, and it just dead ends. I didn't go back and relink it to my front clip. You don't need to do that. You don't want to do that, at least not for this effect, okay? But we've been doing that previously on other things, so I can understand how you might think you need to. All right, any questions before we go any further? Has everybody had time to get their lines drawn? If not, raise your hand, or if you're stuck and need to ask a question. All right, I love the silence. Okay, so we need to add an effect to this mask. And the way to do that is to go to the effects and presets. We are gonna search for the word stroke. The effect we want is called stroke. It is here under sort of a category of generate. You'll notice there are other things with stroke in the name. That's the one we want, just plain old stroke under generate. And I'm going to double click it because the only track I have is this one, it is selected. So if I double click it, it will apply it to that track. All right. So once you have done that, you can go to your effects controls, which should have probably popped up by default up here. We were looking at our project elements, but it jumps over to effects controls when you add an effect. If it didn't, do it manually. And we need to basically have the brush size be big enough to completely hide the text that is there that we're trying to reveal. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go to brush size and I'm going to enlarge it. And as you see, the more I make it thicker, the more it covers up everything that I had drawn or the original font, the actual word Webster. If this is where you'll find out if you needed more anchor points, there is no benefit to trying to keep this super thin. So make it as big as it have to be, has to be to ultimately cover up everything. I've kind of reached that point right now in my example. However, this little part of the letter R is clearly not covered. So I think I'll do the old school thing and I'll just move this little anchor point up a little bit to fix it. Okay. So everything else that was stored of an edge that was revealed has been covered by the fact that I made it super thick. 
but that was enough that I'm like, I'm not going to go super thick just to pick, fix one tiny little corner. So I just grabbed the point. So if you, you have to decide what is the best solution for whatever is left, but your goal is to ultimately have what the original font looked like completely covered with this new white, probably by default colored thing. All right. Now, there are key frameable variables with the stroke effect. There is a start point and an end point that has a slider related to it, okay? If you move the start point, you're basically telling it, okay, you're gonna draw that line I masked out and I want it to start at some point in the illustration that I'm covering. So by default, you actually want it to stay at zero, but I'm just showing you what it will do if you move it, because there are reasons you might want to move it. If you notice, as I drag it over, it would start from a different part of what I masked off. That might be something I want. In this case, it's not, but I wanted you to see what it's doing. It's basically point by point taking away the effect. So let's leave it at zero, but we want the opposite of that. We want the end of the word to be able to move back. So if you move the end point all the way to the beginning where there is no longer anything showing, you can now set a keyframe to basically say this part of the animation at this part of my video, this is what I want it to look like. So I'm going to hit the stopwatch and mark that as my starting point. Then choose how long you want it to take to draw on. I'm going to say two seconds just as an arbitrary number. And then I'm going to drag that zero ending point to 100. And when I do that, it sets a new keyframe and sets it to 100 where the entire thing is drawn on. All right, so now I can see the same illusion just by dragging through my timeline. And you can see that since it's at zero here, it hasn't drawn yet. And since it gets to 100% at two, the drawing is complete and it crosses the T. Bryce, I don't want it to be a big, ugly white thing. I want it to wipe on the original text. Well, that's the last thing we're going to change. We're going to go to paint style. And right now you are drawing or painting on the original image. We don't want that. We want it to e reveal the original image. And When you do that, since I was parked at the end of my timeline, the whole thing is already written on. But if I go back to the beginning, it is not written on. And of course, these plot points will go away if I just click off of the effect and just hit play. We actually see it animate on, which in your terrible frame rate is really slow and awful. But I assure you, it did exactly what we wanted. It played. It's wiping on in the path that I followed. It should skip crossing the T, although I probably went so thick with my font that that doesn't look very good. I would go back and want that final cross thing to work. So these are things you go, mm, not exactly what I wanted. How can I change the keyframes or the thickness to get it to work exactly right? So how that's why I stayed away from those super flowery fonts because there's so many little subtleties that I could screw up. But this is how you paint it on. All we did was draw a path and then use the stroke effect to cover it and then change the way that it is actually painting it on by changing it to reveal following that path. And that's what it did. And you can do this with text. You can do this with a shape. You can do this with a background. You could take a full screen photograph that is color, make a black and white copy, and then wipe the color on as you transition between the two layers. There is all kinds of ways that you can use this. You can thicken up that brush size and make it bigger. There's just the possibilities are endless and it's that easy. I know obviously it feels like it's complicated when you have to listen to me explain it for 20 minutes. But when you if you were to go back and do it again, you would realize, yeah, this takes no time at all. It's super, super, super easy. I have a question, Alec. Go ahead and unmute and ask your question. Uh, I missed I missed the part. I missed something and mine is still just ending as like a white blob. What was I missed the step where you like undo that and make it end nicely. Okay, so it's animating across. It's basically painting something on, but it looks like this. You can see what you're covering up. You'll have to unmute yourself again now. Yeah, yeah, that's what it that's what I'm seeing. 
Okay, then we have to change the paint style, which is at the bottom of the effects control options for the stroke effect we added. So it's up here. My mouse is pointing at it. It defaults to original image. That's a little easier to use while you're painting. So we leave it in its default until we're done, and then we change it to reveal the original image. So now the stroke effect is actually unveiling okay. that. Does that work? Cool. Yeah, thanks. All right, easy things to have missed. All right, cool. I am going to stop recording.